Uh, let's, let's take a look at some, uh, some posters here uh, this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, the first one uh, looks like, it could look like my state. It could probably look like the presiding officer's state. It could look like Missouri. Uh, it could look like uh, any of the states that our uh, pages are from. Uh, but this is, a, uh, this is a traffic jam. And this is a traffic jam that uh, occurs almost every day, almost every business day, and frankly, a lot of weekends in uh, highways across America, from coast to coast. Uh, we spend a lot of time sitting in traffic. We spend a lot of time sitting in traffic. And there's actually quite a substantial cost uh, that uh, inures to our nation's economy. Uh, the, the cost is, I believe to be this year, about $160 billion, a hit on a national economy. I and mean, I'll talk here in just a second about what, uh, what that includes. The uh, part of the waste uh, that uh, is reflected in our, our nation's economy is, uh, you see right here, it says 82 hours wasted in big city traffic. That's uh, per person, per driver on average, across the country, big cities, people sitting, pretty much sitting in traffic. They could be in a uh, minivan, they could be in a small car, a large car, they could be in a truck, but we're talking about 82 hours in a year, just pretty much sitting in traffic. The average across the country, when you take in more rural parts of the country and suburban areas, the, uh, the average is about 42 hours. That's a whole lot of time. And money, time is money. So just think, uh, think about, uh, about that. Let's see if what we have in another, uh, another poster here. Uh, here's, here's one with a, a, a sense of humor. This is not Delaware. This is not Delaware. I'm not sure where this is. But uh, for those who can't read this, it says, uh, you know, the traffic sign that's up here, it says, you'll never get to work on time. Ha ha. And there's some kind of construction program. You see the orange cones uh, out, uh, out there. Someone had a good sense of humor there. My guess it was uh, the folks maybe working on the project had a good sense of humor. My guess is that for a moment, it made the drivers uh, smile, but not for long, especially if they sat in traffic long enough. And 82 hours a year, that's long enough. Let's see what's next. Oh, uh, yeah. Not only uh, do we, uh, is it expensive uh, uh, a waste of time and money uh, for us as individuals to sit, uh, to sit in, uh, in traffic for a long time, the, uh, another part of the cost is caused by potholes and other problems with our, uh, our, our roads. This, I think this is probably a bridge. It may look, it looks like it might be a bridge. But there's a construction project someplace, and here is a pothole. And that's bad, that's bad, 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 bad pothole. But in other parts, not so much in Delaware, but I've seen in other states at least that bad and in, 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 in worse. What's going to happen, these vehicles will come along, they'll hit that pothole, and uh, they you know, may damage their tires, may have to replace a tire or two, they may have to get their, uh, their uh, front end realigned, and, uh, and that costs money. How much? Actually, believe it or not, just like Texas A&M has actually figured out that uh, on average we, we waste 42 hours a, uh, a uh, a year as drivers of a wide variety of vehicles. The way Texas A&M comes up with that. Somebody else actually spent the time to figure out how much we spend on our cars, trucks, vans uh, in order to fix them uh, during the course of the year because of potholes like this and, and other problems with, the, with the, the, the surface of the roads we travel on, the surface of the bridges that we travel on. And, uh, over $350. I've seen a range of anywhere from $350 per year to $500 per year. And we'll say it's just $350 a year. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And that's part of the cost of uh, and the damage to our, our, our economy. The other thing I would say, we, our economy today, as we all know, is a just-in-time economy. And I'll give you a good example. We have a, a port in Wilmington. It's right on the uh, Delaware River. And as you come uh, uh, up the uh, Delaware Bay and it becomes the Delaware River, the port that's closest to the Atlantic Ocean on the Delaware River is the port of Wilmington. And uh, ships are coming in and out of there throughout the day, night, uh, week, weekend. And uh, there for the, the ships don't come in there and spend a week. Ships don't come into the port of Wilmington and spend a day. Uh, they may come in for four hours, they may come in for six hours. But they are there and then they're gone. And because when a, a ship is sitting, it says, as, as, like sitting in the port of Wilmington or any other port, uh, the shipper, whoever owns that boat, that ship, is not making any money. So they want to be in and they want to be out, and that's the way they do their business. And it's important for whoever is uh, coming in, usually by truck, to, uh, to bring uh, uh, goods to put on that ship to send around the world. 
there may be a, a very short window of time to get there. And if, if you're stuck in traffic, the kind of traffic you saw early on, you're stuck in traffic uh, early on, uh, you may miss that window when the ship is in the port, whether it's Wilmington or some other, other port. So that's, uh, that's uh, another reason why, in a just-in-time economy, why those kinds of delays uh, mean time is money. Let's see what's uh, what's. Now, I, I, again, someone else with, with a sense of humor. If you can't read this, uh, it's like a husband and wife driving along in your car, and the, uh, he says, or his wife says, his wife saying, finally someone fixed that pothole. And here's the pothole. And there's a, there's a car down there. And a guy, a driver, who looks like he's had a bad day. A bad day. Not just a bad hair day, a very bad day. And uh, a little humor there. Uh, not if you happen to be this guy. And frankly, probably not if you happen to be this guy. Because if you're running over somebody else's car in a, in a pothole like this, you're probably, this guy's going to spend a lot more than 350 bucks to fix his, his car, get it repaired and going again. Uh, let's, what do we have next? Let's see. Um, you know, you, you see all this stuff. We don't, we're not making this stuff up. The, uh, there's a, a national association, I think it's civil engineers, people who, who spend their life uh, working on transportation projects. And they have, uh, every year for years, they have g given us a grade and what kind of shape our roads, highways, bridges, uh, transit systems are in. And they could give an A, A plus, A, A minus, uh, they could give a B, B plus, B minus. They could give a C, uh, C uh, uh, plus, C minus. Or uh, they could give a D plus, D, D minus. And uh, the last couple of years, we've been right around D to D plus. D to D plus. I think we're probably going down rather than, uh, than going up. So what uh, I think everybody knows, just about anybody who, who drives in, in our country these days knows, we're not investing in our roads, highways, bridges, transit systems the way we need to. Look around the rest of the world, travel around the rest of the world, and you can see in a lot of the countries that we compete against, they do. They do. And one of the components of, uh, of uh, sort of investments we need to make uh, in, our, uh, in our country in order to strengthen our uh, economy, to better ensure the jobs are going to be created or preserved, there's a lot of things we can do, make sure that uh, businesses have access to capital, make sure that the cost of energy is affordable, the cost of of healthcare is, is, is affordable. Uh, make sure that we have public safety. Uh, make sure that the, the people that, that are being, uh, coming out of our, our schools uh, can read, write, think they have the skills that are needed in the, the workforce. Uh, another big one is to make sure that we have the ability to move people and goods where they need to go when they need to go. And uh, here's our current plan. And it's pretty well summed up in this, uh, this uh, sign. It's meant to be funny, and I suppose it is. But uh, I like, I love this, uh, this is part of the plan down here, like, good luck, good luck. And uh, that ain't a plan. That's not a plan that's going to get us where we need to go as a, a nation. I think we have one more uh, poster here. Let's just take a look at that. For those who may not be able to read this, there's a big traffic jam. And some, uh, someone, same fact, a lot of people are saying, you see those little bubbles there, uh, saying, I'd pay to be anywhere but here. I'd pay to be anywhere but here. Um, I believe, I, I, I treasurer of Delaware, studied economics, got MBA, treasurer of Delaware when he was 29, had a chance to serve in the, uh, the House for a while, and, and then as governor for, for eight years, very much involved in, uh, as in, in the National Governors Association, trying to make sure we're invested in our transportation infrastructure across the country. And, uh, and in the Senate, uh, last uh, Senate, I'm on the Environment and Public Works Committee, and the last Congress, who was privileged to serve as chair of the the uh, Senate uh, Subcommittee on Transportation and Infrastructure. So I thought a, a fair amount about these, uh, these, uh, these issues. And uh, I, uh, what I, what I believe that uh, we have for years, if you think about the way we pay for roads, highways, bridges, transit, what, what we've used for years is a, a user pay system. The uh, people, the businesses that use our, our roads, highways, bridges, and, and transit system, they, we pay for them. We pay for them. And uh, in some places, uh, uh, we've sort of gotten away from that. And there's an unwillingness to, to ask people to pay for what they want to use. Everybody wants to have better transportation systems. Uh, and there seems to be a reluctance to pay for that. Uh, when I was governor of Delaware for, for eight years, three times I asked for modest, very modest increases, just a couple of cents in the end, the fees for gas and, uh, and diesel tax. Uh, I think out of three efforts, we, got, we succeeded one time. Not a whole lot uh, was raised. but. We, uh, we uh, cobbled together some other money from other user fees 
and we're able to, to continue to fund uh, transportation funding. The, uh, here at, in the nation, we have, uh, we've had for a number of years a transportation trust fund. Most of the money for that trans transportation trust fund comes from uh, user fees. And uh, the two primary uh, user fees are uh, gas tax. It's been 18, about 18.3, 18.4 cents since, I think, 1993. And it's been a little bit over 18 cents since 1993. Hasn't changed. Uh, the cost of concrete, it's gone up. The cost of um, asphalt, it's gone up. The cost of steel, it's gone up. The cost of labor, it's gone up. Uh, what hasn't gone up is uh, the user fee we're asking people to, to pay, to have uh, better roads, highways, bridges, and, and transit systems. Transit to get people off of our roads, highways, bridges. And uh, because we do that, we can save a lot of money. The, uh, our diesel, uh, we have a tax on uh, diesel, federal tax. It's been um, about 24 cents per gallon. It's been that long, uh, at that level since 1993. 1993. And again, concrete, asphalt, steel, labor have all gone up. But we've not changed in 22 years the, uh, the user fee, if you will, on, on diesel uh, tax. The money that we collect from gas and diesel tax, it doesn't go to pay for health care, it doesn't go to pay for wars, it doesn't go to pay for uh, you know, agriculture or uh, other things. The money that we collect uh, from these user fees goes to pay for roads, highways, bridges, and, and to some extent for transit systems to get people off of our roads, highways, bridges, so the rest of us have some extra room to maneuver. I, uh, I just want to say we... Uh, if I'll, I'll go back in, in time. Thomas Jefferson said a lot of things that are, are worth remembering. One of the things that uh, my favorite Jefferson quotes is this. Jefferson used to say, if the people know the truth, they won't make a mistake. If the people know the truth, they won't make a mistake. And the truth is, we're not investing in our transportation infrastructure in this country the way our competitors are and the way that we, we ought to be. And to, to, do, to do so, it doesn't mean we have to raise, like in some places they have like gas taxes and diesel taxes or four or five dollars a gallon. We don't have that. It's, uh, it's 18 cents and 24 cents for gas and, and diesel combined. If we had increased them since just by the rate of inflation uh, in the past, the, uh, the gas tax would be not 18 cents, it'd be maybe closer to twice that. Diesel tax wouldn't be 24 cents, it might be closer to, to twice that. But we haven't changed it. They haven't changed at all. Here's, here's the way we pay for transportation improvements. Uh, we don't pay for them. Yeah. Uh, we don't raise anything, in some cases. Uh, and uh, we just simply go out and borrow money from the, uh, the uh, Transportation Trust Fund, borrows money from the Federal General Fund. And then when the General Fund runs out of money, we borrow money from countries around the world, like China and other places, and replenish the General Fund, and use that to replenish the, uh, the Transportation Trust Fund. I think that's pretty foolish. Uh, especially uh, to be beholden to the folks in China for our transportation system. That just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Maybe it doesn't to, to you uh, either. Uh, the uh, other things we do, we, we, we have these, uh, I call them cats and dogs, a summer sleight of hand. Um, one, of the, one of the more recent examples, we do something called pension smoothing, uh, where uh, I won't get into how that works, but it's, uh, it's uh, just an awful idea to use, mess with people, muck with people's pensions in order to be able to provide for, for road improvements. That doesn't make much sense. Well, another thing we do is we, we uh, maybe raise uh, like TSA fees when people want to fly. And instead of using that to make uh, our friendly skies safer, uh, we, uh, we uh, put a little bit of that money in roads, highways, bridges. Or maybe we, uh, we sell some of the oil we have in our st st strategic petroleum uh, reserve and where we paid a lot of money several years ago to buy gas, buy oil when it was expensive. Now uh, people think it would be a smart thing to, to sell that oil out of strategic reserve when prices are low to help pay for roads, highways, bridges. Remember the old saying, uh, uh, buy high, sell low, or buy low, sell high? Well, this is really buy high and then put that oil in the strategic reserve and then sell low. That's that's insanity. We can, we can do a lot better than this. And for a number of years, uh, some of us have, 
and encouraged us to do what we've been doing for years, to actually be honest and pay for the improvements to our roads, highways, bridges. And uh, that is to raise the user fees. Not all at once, not by a dollar or two dollars or anything like that, but by four cents a year. Four cents a year starting next year for four years. And then after that, index them uh, going, index the, uh, the, uh, the fees, the taxes on gas and diesel with her, to, according to the rate of inflation. Uh, if we did that, we would have, a, a, I think, a, a combined state and federal uh, user fee, if you will, for gas. I think it would be, at that time, 53 cents. It'd be about 53 cents. How, compared to what? Compared to pretty much any other developed nation in the world, uh, we would have the lowest. We would have the lowest combined federal and state and local uh, user fee for on gas and diesel. The lowest, as far as I can tell. And we can actually double that. We're not going to do that. We could actually double it again. We're not going to do that from 53 to dollar six uh, per gallon. Again, I don't suggest we do that. But if we did, we'd still be among the lowest compared to the rest of the world. Um, I, I'll close with this. Sometimes it, uh, we say, "Well, 16 cents. What could I buy with that? You know, if uh, if I didn't have to pay uh, four years from now an extra 16 cents when I buy a gas a gallon of gas." Uh, what, uh, what would that add up to in a week for the average driver? And I'll tell you, here's, here's this makes it maybe brings it home. Uh, for basically the price of a cup of coffee, a cup of coffee a week, that is the cost that would be incurred by the average driver even after the full increase, the full four, four cents uh, times four years, that's what it's worth. That would be the out-of-pocket expense of the average driver, the price of a cup of coffee a week. We saw earlier some, some of these charts that uh, people are sitting in traffic for, on average across the country, 42 uh, hours per year. We saw uh, some of the, the graphics in there with a the pothole here, and uh, we're reminded that the cost of damage to our car stock spans uh, is anywhere from $350 to as, some estimates as high as $500. And we're, we're learning that for the price of basically a cup of coffee, to invest that money uh, instead, people can still drink coffee, but uh, to put that in our, our roads, highways, bridges, and transit systems, we can have a transportation system we can be proud of. And those four pennies add up uh, over time and uh, they add up uh, over the next 10 years to $220 billion to, uh, to invest, to have for investments. So instead of having roads with potholes that look like the one that I saw and the kind of traffic jams that we saw here from coast to, uh, to coast, we're going to have a transportation system that we can be proud of again in, uh, in this country. We just have to have the will to do it, the will to do it. And uh, again, Thomas Jefferson uh, said, reminded us that things are worth having, they're worth paying for. And if the people know the truth, they won't make a mistake. Roads, highways, bridges, transit, that's, that's worth paying for. And the, the truth is, it doesn't have to break us. It doesn't have to break our banks or our, our budgets. And uh, we can have those, uh, those roads, highways, bridges, again, that we can be proud of. I hope we'll do that.